let's go over the bisection method. So what is this method all about? So it is a way in which we get to determine the, the root of an equation when you're given the domain where it's supposed to lie. Let's say this is where our y-axis is and then they want us to find the value of a, let's say that point, right? They want us to find the value of a. So what they're going to do is they're going to give you, let's say the value there, let, let that be our x and then a certain other value there, y. So they've given you the two points where the root gets to lie. And of course we do know that at the root a there, we do expect that uh, function of a is going to be equal to what? To zero. That's our root. You know? So we know that. So now the method that is going to help us find the value a, or of course the value closer to a, is what we're calling the bisection method. So what principle do we work with for us to, to, to get the value of a? That's what the bisection method is all about. And that's what we focus on. So I'll start with uh, this very idea and I'll draw a graph. So I'll draw this kind of a function. Let's say of this function there. So now we're trying to find the root of uh, this function. So let that be any value. So it's between A and B. And then they want us to find the value there. Let's say value x. How? What's the, what's the point? How do we look at the bisection method? So the basic idea is, if you look at any values before x going to towards a, all these values, if you try to substitute into the given function, of course we're trying to assume we have a function there. You notice that all the values that you're going to be determining are going to be what? Positives because they lie above the positive x-axis, above the positive x-axis, yeah. Or let me just say above the x-axis. Now, if you look at the other side, let's say you get the point after x, you expect that the function is supposed to be a negative because we are going towards the negative y-axis. So that's the basic idea there. Now let's do this. Now let's say, what are we supposed to do for us to just get to closer and closer to x? So we'll try first of all by working with this the idea of getting the middle point between A and B, okay? So find the value, the, of course, the midpoint between A and B. And let's say the midpoint is uh, somewhere this side. Let's say that's, this is the midpoint. So if you find that one to be the midpoint, you'll notice that these guys are going to be on the same side. They are all going to give us what? A negative function because they are below the x-axis. So what we'll do is we'll discard B and then we'll consider this very point and that point. Again, we'll try to find the midpoint. So you'll notice again to say it's going to be somewhere there. And since these guys are lying on the same side there, they are all positives. So we'll discard this one and consider this one. So we'll have this one and that one. So we'll be getting closer and closer to where the root is. And this is what you call the bisection method. Okay. Now let's look at a more example, just an example to help us understand more, a practical example. Of course, I'll look at the idea of uh, us adding the a quadratic function. Okay, so I'll, I'll have a quadratic function there. So this is a quadratic function. So we have a quadratic function like that. And then of course, it's not drawn to scale. And then you have, um, Let's say a root that is lying between. Okay, so the actual root there is a 4. The actual root is a 4. Take note of that. So then I'll just get to say, okay, let's say in the question we are told the root lies between 1 and, um, let's say, 6. Yeah, 6. And then we'll take an assumption to say we don't know that the root is a 4, but we do know that our root is equal to 4 ourselves. We do know that. So what are we supposed to do for us to make that work? So what we're going to do is this. We need to first of all understand that the, the idea is this guy is, um, of course, it's not supposed to be as linear as I've drawn it. It's something that comes out this way. Like it's supposed to, 
yeah that kind of thing that's how it's supposed to move so this is like going this side that's the way the function is supposed to be drawn okay because basically something that is like this right yeah so of course don't mind that so now what we're going to do is we'll try to find this of the midpoint of what one and six that's the basic idea and that's where everything comes in that's where everything is starting from and that's where we are building from now what you need to understand is the fact that if they are on the same side and then if they are let me go back to this same part if we are drawn something like this and then if they are on the same side what it means is they are giving us a positive so if they are down there they are going to give us negative values if they are all on the same side here they are all going to give us positive values now the basic idea is if you multiply them if they are greater than zero then you need to forget about what the certain point and then consider the midpoint and that's what basically we're going to be doing as we get to see so let's look at this so we have one and six not so what are we supposed to do okay to just make it faster let's consider that we have a five instead so we have one and five so if you get to add this what would be your midpoint there so one plus five is basically a six and then if you divide by two you have a three so where is our three where is it going to lie is it after is it between one and four or somewhere there so understand that uh, it is somewhere this side right a three that is where it is so the actual equation of this function is basically f of x is equal to x minus 4 and then x plus 1. So what we would want to do is first of all get to substitute in the equation and see what we're going to have and use that idea. So the idea is if you look at what we have and the fact that this is what we have in the actual sense we want to discard and forget about 1. Okay. But how do we do that without a sketch? Because in this case, it's because we already know that the value is a 4. Now, in a case where we don't know, how should we know we are supposed to remove? How do we know 3 is this side or is the other side? So work with the idea that if they are on the same side, they are, of, well, they may be negative. Let's say these ones are going to be negatives. If you multiply them, they're supposed to give you what? Positives. So whenever they are greater than 0, whenever the products of the two functions are greater than zero it implies they are on one side discard the other value and remain with the midpoint so equally if they are on the same side or the other side as well while they may be positives as well if you multiply them they're supposed to give you the same sign which is going to be greater than zero so we don't want that and that's what we it's going to help us to discard what is unwanted so if we get to substitute the given value the midpoint three in this equation three minus four and then we have three plus one so you notice that you have in the other brackets you have a negative so negative one times four so our value is a minus four so f of three is equal to negative four and then let's try it using the other ones as well uh, for one as well which is also one of our points so if you put the one there one minus four and then one plus one you have a minus 3 multiplied by a 2. So you have a minus 6. So f of 1 is a minus 6. And then the other one, f of what? f of uh, 5 is going to be equal to 5 minus 4. Multiply again is 5 plus 1 is a 6. So we have a 6. So a basic idea is we are comparing everything that we have against the midpoint, which is that. So if you multiply, if you get negative four and six, they are going to give us a positive. Now, if you get negative four and six, they are going to give us what? A negative. We don't want a value that is a positive because it tells us they are on one side. So three and one are giving us a positive because they are on the same side. So you are able to tell by the sign, even without a graph, because in the actions they are not going to give you a graph. Okay, so what do we know now? So we know that we we'll discard what? We we'll discard one, and then we we'll get the midpoint. So this one goes. So we are now talking about the midpoint three and five. So we are now looking at three and five. So that's the way we are going to be moving until we get there. So now we are saying our midpoint or 
our value is between 3 and 5. That's where we need to expect to find what? Our root. So what do we do again? So we'll repeat the same procedure again. What do we do? So we'll try to find the midpoint. 3 and 5. 3 and 5. The midpoint is what? The midpoint is, is a 4. Now try to substitute in the function. So our function is x minus 4, x plus 1. So if you get to substitute what we have, you're going to have 4 minus 4, and then 4 plus 1. So you have a 0 against 5, so 0. So whenever you find that f of r, which is your midpoint, gives you a 0, then basically what you have is what? Is already the root itself, even you've already found the root. Now, there are going to be some cases where you will not be able to find the exact value. But there is what we call a tolerance. Let's say you get maybe a value of 3.9. If your tolerance is, let's say, less than 0.2, so that means the answer is correct. Okay. That's what we... But the basic idea is understand what you should discard at what point. And that's basically how the bisection method works. So in the next tutorial, we're just going to understand the algorithm and also how the flow chart comes out of the bisection method but this is basically the, basically the basic idea of the, the bisection method i hope you've, you found this video helpful and make sure to subscribe and like for more videos thank you for watching